Max Gawler, Melbourne Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. This is Nat Fife from the Fremantle Footy Club. Trent Cochin from the Richmond Footy Club. Scott Benderbury from the Collingwood Football Club. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. Patrick Cooch from the Carlton Footy Club. It's Rory Sloan here from the Adelaide Crows. This is Tom Mitchell. You're listening to the Coaches Panel. The exodus at the GWS Giants continues. Harry Perryman, one of many players leaving and wanting to leave the Giants. He has now landed as a free agent at the Collingwood Football Club. But what does this mean for the Giants? What does it mean for the Magpies? How will they use them? And for us that play Supercoach, AFL Fantasy, Dream Team and Keeper, how does this help us in 2025 as we play fantasy football? Harry's such a, a fun and fascinating player. He, he's getting a bit of knocks in the media community at the moment around maybe he's not worth the money he's being paid, things of that nature. And to a degree, your boy's getting paid real nicely. But the reality is clubs are looking for players just like Harry. He, he's a versatile option. He can play big body, inside center bounce, inside clearance player. He's got some speed and some polish about him. That means he can also be used as a link-up transition player through the wing. And he's also shown at various times through his career, he, he can rebound and intercept really, really well. And so while he's never achieved a top five in a club best and fairest, and maybe not even a top 10, certainly in recent memory for my reckoning, this is the type of player that a lot of AFL clubs are desiring on their list where they not just in-game, but throughout a number of different ways, it just enables squad versatility for them. As I mentioned, Harry can play inside mid, link up wing, rebounding half back, and and even has shown, like I said, some times to be able to intercept and and take some really nice overhead marks. So uh, well done, Harry, for getting your payday. If it's anywhere near the rumoured amount, credit to you. But We'll talk about what this means for Collingwood and how they may plan to use him. But for the Giants, what does this mean for them? Unfortunately, alongside others that are either moving as free agents or requesting moves via the trade mechanism, another of their best 22 players is heading out of this team. Um, Unfortunate and frustrating. He spent more time across the wings throughout this season, not really played as a centre bounce mid. You've got to go back to pretty much 2022, for that to be anything of any level of regularity, even some 2023. So this just opens up a wing spot and a rebounding spot. Uh, You could argue that coming out of the team as a free agent as well is also a similar style of player out, Um, but Harry's a little bit more dimensional in what he could bring to the team. So what do the Giants do to replace him? Because it it is a best 22 spot. It is not a depth killer for them. Rather, it means an elevation of depth. So there's a couple of guys I think could come into the team. Angwin um, could get it if it's a pure outside spot. Uh, Weir is another who's got a little bit of inside and outside about him. He's had some good form at the VFL, so I don't mind him. Uh, Rouston, they've wanted to get him into this side. Uh, again, more of an inside type of player. Do they keep the pushing of, of Kelly from an inside-outside mix to an, just an exclusive outside? And does a player like a Rouston get into the team? I think that could be an option. Uh, gosh, even a Fonte, who started his career as a midfielder, now is kind of finding his way more in the defensive unit and even some intercepting, got some height about him as well. So it's certainly not a like for like, but Fonte could get that spot too. So yet none of these guys are at the level that Harry Perryman is right now, but in 12 to 24 months, I think the club would be hopeful that one of these players could elevate and step up into that spot. Look, they could look at the draft to being the replacement, but the Giants have done a pretty good job with all of these guys, I think, have got some talent about them and are worthy of at least opportunities. So these are some of the names that I think they'll be looking at to come into this spot. Uh, Where does he play at Collingwood? Well, rumoured, the driver behind getting out of the Giants, outside of getting a good payday, was he wanted more midfield and inside midfield opportunity. At Collingwood, right now, they've got one of the oldest core midfield groups going around. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 don't, no, don't, no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I'd only have to do like four of these. 
with its unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at midmobile.com slash save whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Mitchell. Not exactly young. Crisp. Not exactly young. Pendlebury. He might be my dad and I'm 40, so he could be older. Um, and even it's a little more on the outside, but a steel side bottom sits in that space as well. So so there's a number of players that are already on the aging side of things, let alone Dugowie, he's in the latter portion of his 20s. Really, the young bright spark for the Magpies is Nick Dacos inside that midfield. So what I'm interested to see, and I think is how this will work out, is he'll have a split halfback, wing, and inside midfield role. Something in those three ecosystems where he's been at his best. I think the halfback is the least likely, more likely wing, inside, outside, inside, outside, midfield. And over the next 12 months, once the likes of Mitchell move on, Pendlebury moves on, Crisp may fade back into the back line. Then I think Harry Perryman just adds that kind of age gap in between Dugowie and Dacos a little bit, just builds out that midfield so that they're not only looking to the youngsters that they've got that may or may not develop in the way that they like. So I've got Perryman right now, sort of an inside-outside midfield split with the occasional rotation of halfback. Um, And that's where I see it for the 12 months coming. And then in 2026 and beyond, when the likes of Mitchell and Pendlebury finish up their time on an AFL list, that's when I think the more predominant midfield time might come for Harry Perryman. What does it mean for us in fantasy footy? Well, he's shown at times that he can score okay. There's a couple of tons in AFL fantasy this year. There's one in Supercoach. But really, you're looking back to 2020 to 2022 in Supercoach, where he averaged 90 plus every single one of those years. While in 2021 and 2022 in AFL Fantasy, it's an 85 plus. Technically, if you want to argue 2020 and use, you know, the COVID 1.25 mathematic, it's in that 80 sort of range too. But really, we're looking at a three year window where Harry Perriman, when he was getting some center bounce presence, as well as a core distribution space off halfback, he was scoring like a premium defender when he held defensive status. So certainly if he's anywhere near those sort of roles, which I think he'll have at Collingwood, well, this gets interesting. And his positional allocation will ultimately determine any sense of relevance for us heading into the new year. Now, he's priced not quite at that at the moment. So there's certainly 10 to 15, maybe a fraction more, depending on the format you play of forecast value based on price point and what he's previously done. And if you think he can get back there again, well, now all of a sudden you've got to consider him in all formats of the game, especially if he maintains defensive status. If he's a midfield only, he'll slide right down your draft boards. He'll slide right down draft day's pecking order. He'll still get picked up. Often we see players that move clubs in trade and free agency get a little bit more hype and talk about them. Whether they deserve it or not is irrelevant. They just get it. And I can see if he's a pure mid, he's a nice late round value pick on draft day. And I've got zero classic interest at all. If he maintains defensive status, which he's had previously throughout his career, well, now there's some interest if that role is sitting through that midfield. Um, Dacos is clearly the star of that Collingwood midfield group, and will rightfully so. The, the ball will continue to funnel in and around and through him. But do they want him as a first-touch player, or do they want him as the transition scorer? That might be the interesting dynamic that comes through there. Regardless, Perryman's position allocation from champion data, whether it's a mid, defender mid, or pure defender, If it's anything that doesn't have a defensive labeling in on it, I don't think there's going to be, and rightfully so, any community interest outside of the draft community. Um, There'll be a little bit of value on top of him, but he needs defensive status to make him someone we seriously consider in 2025. 
But do you agree or disagree on my take around Harry Perriman? If you're watching this on YouTube, you can comment below and let me know what you think. If you're streaming this as an audio podcast, thank you so much for doing so. If you haven't followed the channel and given it a five-star rating, make sure you do that. Every single player that moves clubs, this trade and free agency period will be dropping an episode with a review on what they are going to be in 2025 for a fantasy perspective, as well as looking at the impact on the clubs. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. In the player movements are well and truly happening, and now it's time to see what will be for us in 2025.